it is freezing out here. I thought moving to central Florida would make things a bit warmer in the winter, but that is certainly not the case. This is our new house. I'll give you a tour of this in a separate video, but for now, an important thing to do when you move into any new place to set up your home internet solution. We have Ubiquity this time around to, uh, yeah, take care of things. We bought all this stuff ourselves, but uh, I'm really excited because I've heard really great things about Ubiquity. Uh, obviously, every now and then you have the black sheep case, right? But uh, Ubiquity in general is a really good brand. Their Unify solutions are super simple to set up. The entire ecosystem is very uh, just welcoming as long as you stay within that ecosystem. And that's what we've done here. We bought two of these access points, these are the nano access points. We also have a gateway uh, because our modem doesn't have a firewall. I think it does actually, but we're gonna turn it off so we're not being yeah, double firewalled. And then we also have a PoE switch. So this will be fun. Sorry about the wind. We're gonna get inside and set it all up. The Be Quiet PeerBase 500 is a serious compact mid-tower contender. It packs enough space for a 360mm AIO, full-size ATX motherboard, and extended graphics card along with a 140mm bracket at the rear. It comes with interchangeable top covers for either airflow or silence. You can snag it in white, black, and metallic gray. Large power supplies welcome, nearly an inch of cable management space behind the motherboard tray. Whew, I could go on. Check it out via the link below. So this is our current home internet solution and it looks pretty terrible. Obviously not enough for a home of this size, and yeah, I mean, this is just one Google Home router and then the ISP modem. We have the used Spectrum, not the biggest fan of Spectrum. My internet speeds are worse than they were at the apartment, but we have way more space to play with in this house. I'll give you guys a tour and a dedicated video. Also, sorry about the echo. Fortunately though, we have some things from Ubiquity. We have a security gateway, good for, you know, security, firewall and such. Uh, we have an eight switch PoE uh, switch. Yeah, probably should have said that a bit differently. And then we have two of these Nano HD uh, access points, which are going to be mounted to the ceilings. That's actually a PoE Cat6 termination point there. And then we have another one on the second floor. So we're gonna overhaul it. I know this is just the Wi-Fi solution we're tackling in this video. I also have to hire people to run Ethernet in the walls, which I couldn't do while the house was being built because that's just how they build these houses. Uh, so we'll tackle that in a separate video. So we've got all this stuff laid out and we're going to be throwing this and this in that, uh, that panel that you saw a bit earlier. And then these two are gonna be mounted to the ceilings. So let's get started. So the original solution here again was just the modem straight into a Google Home Wi-Fi router. So we do have an outlet in here. I'm gonna have to run an extension cable because we have to have the modem powered as well as the PoE switch as well as the security gateway. Uh, so maybe just uh, one extra port and I do have a solution for that as well. I also wanna really take my time in here and try to clean things up as we go. Uh, these little panels here are removable and you kind of move them around so you can screw things into this and then mount it uh, kind of wherever you want in the uh, the panel, whatever you want to call this. I'm sure there's an official name for it. I'm not a networking guru, so I probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, you can see you can pull this out and uh, you can mount things to this, which is what we'll do once I clip that zip tie. And then uh, we'll place everything back in here and uh, kind of adjust the height. And hopefully it'll look a lot cleaner than what you just saw. So this is kind of the general layout I'm going for here. I want the, uh, the gateway and the switch to be below the adapters, but we're gonna raise this entire panel pretty high up in that, uh, in that uh, cabinet there. So if we can get this to mount here and this here, this is pretty heavy, so we're gonna have to tie this down for sure. Uh, and then uh, kind of manage our cables behind this. It should look super clean. We can have the modem below that. Of course, the, the routing here, in case you're wondering the order of, of things. So from the modem, we're gonna run an ethernet cable to the uh, WAN port, out of WAN, and then uh, from LAN one into any one of these switches here. This is basically, it's a switch, but it's a PoE switch. So it injects power uh, into uh, the ethernet cable that you're using. And uh, that way, all we need to do is just plug in one PoE ethernet cable into this and it'll work. We don't need a separate power cable uh, for this uh, access point. Actually, these come with their own PoE injectors of sorts but we don't need those because we're gonna use a PoE switch, which uh, these aren't cheap solutions by any means, but uh, it's definitely gonna future-proof us and give us uh, extra ports if we wanna run, again, Ethernet through the walls, which is my plan in the future. All right, so I think this will do for now. I do have zip ties. Uh, I could probably secure the, uh, the switch and the gateway a bit better, but I've just taken a ton of adhesive pads and uh, stuck them to the panel. Uh, you can see kind of between them. So. 
Uh, they look to be pretty stable. Like if one falls or whatever, I'll just end up zip tying it again. But uh, I think that's gonna look super clean. We're gonna put it about that high. That way we can have the modem below it and uh, have just enough length, I think, for the power cables to plug into the outlet there at the bottom. So let's get this mounted and then uh, start taking care of the rest. go. These will just run down the side. Kind of like that. And I think we'll have, yep, just enough length to plug those in. So we'll save those for now. This of course is for the uh, modem. And I might end up using my own modem at some point as well. Cause I'm not sure if that one's gonna cut it. But uh, basically, so these, Cat6 cables run up to those two ports I showed you earlier. So these are gonna have to run like so. They're gonna have to go right there, right here. This is the PoE out section. So now we're gonna put the modem back in where it was before. And this is the line that runs out to the, to, to the cable box outside. So you need to plug this in. And once this is in, then uh, we'll run the ethernet cable from this yellow port here into the WAN port on the gateway, which is up there. And then from the LAN port, the other side of that, we'll run it into the switch. This is about as clean as that's gonna get there. So the modem is back in. Okay, so one CAT6 cable here. It's gonna run from the modem, like I said earlier, into the gateway and the WAN port, which is that one right there. By the way, um, I didn't know any of this beforehand. And again, networking is still very new to me, so I don't claim to know much at all about this. Uh, w the only reason I know how to even route this stuff is because I was reading the uh, Ubiquiti manual for the gateway, and it told me exactly how to set things up, which was really helpful. So even if you're a noob in this kind of stuff, as long as you know generally what to buy, uh, you shouldn't really have a problem setting up your own network. Golly, this thing is dirty. Gonna have to take a Swiffer dust or two it after we're finished here. All right, one power cable and the other power cable. There we go. So things should be taking off here soon. We got power to everything. And uh, now I think we're just waiting to plug in the access points. Let's give it a shot. We'll find out if we did this right or not. All right, so I'm on a dining chair. Definitely not recommended. But, uh, we're gonna pop this off and see how to mount these access points. Now they do come with their own little mounting bracket. I'm not sure if that's gonna fit in here. I'm sure it will, but uh, you never know. Worst case, we have to drill into the ceiling. Okay, so uh, it's been a minute, and the reason why is because I wanted to figure out exactly how I was gonna do this before I showed you what I did. Uh, and this took uh, quite a bit of trial and error, and uh, so now I can, now I'm confident enough to show you guys what I had to do. Problem is, the two Ethernet little port access areas up top on the ceilings, I use these standard outlet covers and uh, a standard outlet box, which means the dimensions don't fit the uh, stock little mounting gear included with the Ubiquiti access points. That means we have to kind of jimmy something together. And basically what I ended up doing was screwing the mounting plate to the outlet cover and then uh, dremeling a hole out for the ethernet cable to run through and into the router. So that's what we're gonna do again. You also have to make a few, uh, you have to drill here and here to uh, be able to secure the cover back to the ceiling. So it's really not difficult to do. I just wish that Ubiquiti would include standard outlet mounts in these little nano AP boxes. You don't get that though, which means we have to improvise. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is line up the bracket with the outlet. We're gonna drill some holes here. This is where the screws are gonna go, obviously. So I'll do one here first. I'm gonna do this for all four holes. Of course, make sure that the bracket is held in place so that all four line up after the fact.
Next what I do is use some shallow nails. I think these are wood nails, so they self-tap. They're flat Phillips screws. Right, and you should end up with something like this. Now we need to pre-drill the holes for the original screws that uh, held the uh, little cover for the outlet in place. And uh, that should take care of this part. Uh, then we need to drill a couple of holes and then take a Dremel, preferably, uh, and uh, kind of bore out a large hole for our Ethernet cable to pass through. All right, so drill from the back of these. Typically you'll have uh, these little channels here, uh, so you can drill straight through those and you won't really need to pre-drill. go. See the hole barely fits, but even if it had broken this little frame here, it wouldn't have mattered because this part is not needed necessarily to lock it in place. It's, it's these little indentions here. And do the same for the other side. My battery's dead. All right, so we've got some holes Pre-drilled here, wife is setting up the couch. I don't know what what he's doing right now. He's <laughs> just laying there, so helpless. <laughs> hey buddy! Hey buddy! Hi, how you doing? How you doing? And very quickly, Dremel. So yeah, the, the, the drill just basically cut some holes out for us to get us started with the Dremel. Make it a lot easier here. And essentially all you want to do is cut a hole that's large enough to allow an Ethernet port to uh, pass through it. Not really necessary to clean it up very much because it's all going to be covered by the access point itself. But uh, still, a hole about that size should be good enough. Go ahead and close the garage. And uh, yeah, all that's left now is to mount this to the ceiling, pass the ethernet cable through. I actually have to uh, patch an, an end onto it. And then, yeah, you can mount the access point to it. There are other ways to do this, other things to use. This is just what I had on hand. And we'll take a short Cat6 cable from here to the access point. Now you can see, cable passes straight through, the little cutout we made. And, yep, cover pops back on just like that, if I can reach it. Oh, I really need a ladder. Looks good. Tuck the cable in, and let's get the access point. <sighs> Mama's still working on the couch. She's still working on the couch. Is she not paying attention to you, buddy? Is she not paying attention to you? Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. We're gonna plug this in first, right here, oh, if I can get to it. Oh, this little cover here, yeah, gives you a little slot for the cable to be routed. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, I need a ladder so bad. Uh, and uh, yeah, so really the only downside of using this method is that you can kind of see the uh, outlet cover underneath, or I guess above in this case, the access point. I don't think it looks that bad though, to be honest. And if you have tall enough ceilings, it kind of just, yeah, you, you don't even really notice. So I'm fine with that for now. Doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to work and not look terrible. And I think we took care of both of those in this video. All right, so a few lasting thoughts about the Ubiquiti process and um, the setup and the, just the products overall, how I think that they fare uh, given their prices. These are definitely premium products. You could do this a lot cheaper. You could buy just the home solutions. We, we went with the enterprise uh, solutions because I wanted to, to step up my networking game just a little bit. Um, and because, I mean, that's because I'm running the company out of the same house that I'm also 
living in. So uh, it, it, it has to be able to stand up to a lot. And until we hardwire these computers, I need to have strong access points that are preferably directional. That's what these nanos do. They also have the, uh, the in-wall um, access points and, and they, the, some of those even have they act like little mini switches too. Uh, but I'm very familiar with these, the, the pros more specifically, and I wanted to stay with this general style here. So that's why I bought the Nanos. Probably shouldn't have done that in retrospect, seeing as though the builder decided to cap off the outlets um, and the ceilings with actual outlet covers and used outlet boxes. So that made the dimensions a bit weird, but uh, it's all right, we worked around it. Something I will need to test long-term, handoff capabilities. I, it's always uh, a complaint that I see in the forums for people that use Ubiquiti products is that the handoff is a bit rough at times when you're talking about smartphones and other things moving from the, the vicinity of one access point to another. And for those who don't know what a handoff is, in the case of a mesh network or uh, where you have multiple access points, uh, the network needs to know that you're moving closer to one AP and further away from another uh, so that it can hand off that connectivity uh, so that you're not experiencing, um, I don't know, a, a network, uh, I don't wanna say delay. I mean, you're gonna see network degradation if you move further away from an AP, right? Uh, but if you move closer to another one, then the network needs to know that it needs to hand off, right? Uh, to that closer AP. Uh, so seeing as though these are like literally on top of each other, it's not really gonna be a big issue here. And the house is pretty compact despite it being a two story. So I, I really don't think this is the best place to test it either. Uh, but if I do notice any issues with that, I will be sure to follow it up in a separate video. If you hear the baby crying, I'm sorry that it's just a, um, <laughs> comes with the, uh, comes with the dad package, I guess. And I'm thankful that uh, Lisa is able to keep him preoccupied while we're doing this. Um, I, I, I will say, again, like I'm reminded of Apple when it comes to ubiquity with respect to networking. Uh, very inclusive in its own right, but if you try to add outside stuff, like I have a ring security system I'm trying to set up, we'll see how uh, well that works with uh, the network and if we have any issues with connectivity there. Uh, although I don't imagine there will be many. I mean, this is literally just a Wi-Fi solution for now. Uh, but when we start hardwiring things, maybe that, that is where things will get spicy. If you guys like this video, again, I do apologize that uh, my newbiness probably showed through, but I appreciate your patience. Uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, I would appreciate that. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more house DIY vlogs, affiliate like kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to pump out more of these. We have a lot of projects still on hold here at the house. And uh, again, I'll be sure to give you that tour of the house here soon once it's uh, looking a little more clean. My name is Greg. Thanks for DIYing a network solution with me.